to Gulfstream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Katie Stazak. We're all pumped up today. It's Friday afternoon. We got a fast made track, firm turf course, but we got a fantastic carryover in the Rainbow Six today, which starts in race number four. Now, you got to remember, this is a nine race car today. Race number four. How about this? $684,000 plus in the Rainbow Six, and you can have it for a 20 cent wager. And the guys have been hitting this, Katie, all year long for not gigantic tickets. It's not that you have to spend $10,000 winning. That's the beauty of the 20 cent wager. Absolutely. We had a few tickets that were paid for with only about $32, $12. You can hit a massive amount of money with a very, very small investment. That's why so many people play because why not when you can take home that kind of money and it's going to grow, it will be well over 700000 today. You know, they didn't hit the uh, Rainbow Six yesterday, but there were six out of sixes, and I believe it paid 20 something thousand dollars, like $29,000. So even though there wasn't that one unique single ticket, six to six still paid fantastically yesterday. And some people hit that, you know, with, with uh, like we said, those $32.40 tickets. But that starts in race number four. As I mentioned, we got a fast main track. We got a firm turf course this afternoon. So let's get delve right into the action. Our first race will be on the turf course. One mile starter optional claim of four year olds and up. $12,500. One jockey change, a couple of scratches. Jockey change comes on the number two. The rider was Eddie Castro. Scratch to number eight and number nine. Those were both the main track only participants. Let me get the microphone out of my mouth there second you know this we talked about this yesterday a little bit this is by far the most competitive race on the card what a great way to start the action but we want to go back and show you that race from march 17th uh, where a lot of these horses that are in this were in that, that race were in this race today yep you can see it's a pretty crowded screen there <laughs> we're going to be taking a look at lighthouse sound oak bluffs and purely boy they all return in this race today and like you mentioned what a great way to start out this card because this is a wide open great betting race you're going to take a look at lighthouse sound going to get caught four wide here on the second turn is going to get up for second purely boy that is the five he's going to fade to third after pressing the pace and oak bluffs is going to be your winner here and that is the four drawing off to win they are all coming back today and i have a few of them at the top of my ticket headline by lighthouse sound and i settled on lighthouse sound based on pace scenario there's a lot of speed in this race and i think this gelding is going to get a perfect stalking trip behind the speed of oak bluffs tap and trade and lasso this gelding really hasn't done much of anything wrong this winter two wins and two seconds from four starts he was claimed twice very popular and this is going to be his second start for trainer bobby De Bona in the money in nine of 13 starts at a mile we were thinking exactly alike, but with a different complete horse in here. I went with the pure, purely boy, and I'll, I'll read you what I wrote down here. Stretching out to a mile with the perfect running style, needed to sit behind what I see is a strong pace scenario. So here's another horse, like your horse, the two in Lighthouse Sound, that absolutely has a shot to win this opening race. So if you like the two's Lighthouse Sound, you got to use it. Uh, you know, Katie has the one on our ticket, too, and we both used the number seven lasso, but I would not be comfortable just taking one of these horses and say this horse is going to win this race. Absolutely not. I think Purely Boy also has the stalking style to do well in this race, but my concern is that he may have to be forced out a little bit from the one hole. That yeah. was why I couldn't put him right on top. But this horse had a five race win streak going through December. He can overcome things and he's very talented. Cannot leave him off the ticket. The other horse that uh, you showed winning that last race, you did not use in your ticket. That's the three Oak Bluffs. This one stretching out slightly today after using his speed as you saw last time out. The defeat Sim Okay, there's got a lot of speed in this race, but this is Jamie Ness. He's really good winning consecutive races, and if things work out, a lot of times on paper you say, oh, yeah, there's a lot of speed, and there's a, you know, a bunch of stalkers and closers, and then somebody goes out to the lead and steals the race. So maybe that would be number three, Oaks Bus, but you can tell by the way we're talking how wide open this race is. Yes, Oak Bluff's got a 91 buyer from that race. That actually was a little bit of a deterrent for me because I thought, wow, what a monster effort. He might regress a little bit off of that. Well, let's go to the second race today, six furlongs claim is three and up non winners of two races in life six thousand two hundred fifty dollars both lost our top pick in here the number three sun drop kid is scratched out of the race i scratched into number seven massive now in the rohan creton barn uh, the gelded son of mass media is really taking a big drop today into this two lifetime claim after facing considerably tougher but it was six months ago right Rohan Creighton, 25% with horses making their first start for him. However, he's just one for seven with horses returning from a 61 to 180 day layoff. So 
You could go either way. Something's <laughs> got to give there. But he broke his maiden here last July. He's run well over the track before. I scratched into him, and I think you could definitely make a case for yeah, him. Yeah, and number five, Chevron Light, similar thing. This one has earned a check in two of his three re -race, recent races at this level and distance, and I see him, uh, you know, no problem him grabbing another share in here. I don't know about the top part of the ticket, uh, but I put him on there, and I threw the number six, come on, Charlie, and he's dropping, was facing a little bit tougher on the turf. Same thing I did with the one he did it his way. Let's go to the third race today, and this one is a one-mile claimer, three-year-olds and up, non-winners of two races in life. Scratch number five, here's to Mike, and here, so we'll be dealing with a six-horse field, and I went with the number two niche, but you started it off with number three, Abbasab Brothers. Yeah, this Colt's dropping down to the claiming ranks after pressing the pace and fading in a starter allowance in his last start on March 20th. What I like about this Colt is the race he put in two starts back when he rallied to finish second in a 50 thousand dollar optional claimer despite getting caught very wide in that race he really made a good account of himself against that tough company and coincidentally the horse that beat him that day was the same horse that beat him and finished just ahead mm -hmm. of him the start before he broke his maiden so maybe there's a pattern here this horse <laughs> beats him he comes back to win the competition is going to be softer for him today and Gustavo Delgado and Edgar Zayas winning at a 30 percent clip when they team up well, the horse you have in second, I put on top of my ticket. I, I have the three Abbasab brothers for all the reasons you mentioned. Son of Flashstorm broke his maiden for a $25,000 tag here back on January 29th. So he certainly fits at this level. But number two, Niche, this one moved to the Larry Pilati barn. Vita Claim returns to the main track. You look at its last race, chase the pace, weakened to finish third. It was against similar, but it was going a mile in the 16th on the turf. Uh, the new connections, uh, they have uh, Edgar Prado handling the surface switch today. Just thought the barn was so hot during the championship meeting. I love the turf to dirt angle, so I put it on top, but I'm going to definitely use the three Abbasab brothers as part of my uh, exacta box. The horse that you didn't use, and I didn't know what to do with, was the six Sanga. This one moved to the Patricia Farrell Bon Vita claim. She drew, this horse drew away and crushed the field of $12,500 maidens by about nine and a half lengths. They keep the same jockey, Juan Lever, in the saddle. Proven commodity at the distance. What do you do with it? That was the question for me, and he, probably a horse that I would have put on my ticket had there been a scratch in here, but coming off of the maiden win, a huge effort, I thought you have to regress a little bit, plus it's tough facing winners for the first no. time. Those were the question marks for me, but definitely that nine length score jumps out at you. Yeah, you know, and I just didn't know what to do. I kept going back and always putting the horse on top because you know, I looked at the level of competition. If not on top, you know, I was thinking maybe second and, and I just said, oh, let me throw him on the ticket because if he beats me, I'm going to be mad, you know. So I did use him on there. Anybody else you like in here? The seven, Maximus Decimus, is going to make his second start back off a nine-month layoff for trainer Michelle Nevin. A small sample here, but she's 60% with horses making their second start off a layoff of 180 days or more. Turning a bullet work to tune up for this start went four furlongs in 48 flat on April 1st at Palm Meadows. Let's go to the fourth. One mile maiden claim is Phillies and Mares three and up. $12,500. We got a full field of nine runners in here. No scratches or jockey changes to report. I went with the number nine starship, Lisa, and so did you. And I just thought... It was a logical choice to shed the maiden tag, responded last time out to a drop in competition, was five wide in that race, but finished second at this level and distance. The trainer, Steve Dwoskin, he's got Jesus Rios in the saddle. On paper, looks like the one to beat. Completely agree. One of the more lightly raced fillies in this group, only four starts, and I think she's just really starting to figure things out. Having the experience, a lot of experience, quite a few starts at a mile also gives her the edge. You know, this starts, of course, the Rainbow Six, as we were talking up at the beginning of the show with $650,000 plus. This is not a horse that I would be able to single here. I have to go look for somebody else in here. Uh, you used the number seven and so did I in second and that's Gallant Lady stretching out to a mile today. Two previous races at the uh, distance. Hit the board in one of those. Finished the willing third in a trio of similar. That was going three quarters of a mile. The trainer is Bob Donato and he's got the apprentice Tyler Gaffleyone, uh, you know, handling the stretch out in distance. And this horse, if he can translate that current form to the distance, I think he can be real strong in here. 
Absolutely. Has hit the board more than any other horse in this field. She's finished in the money seven times, just hasn't been able to get the job done. You know, reliable, consistent, but the fact that she's had so many chances and just hasn't been able to get it done is why I couldn't put her higher on the ticket. You know, when I'm putting my Rainbow Six ticket together, you always look and you say, well, what about this horse here? Here's a horse that didn't show much last race, but then you look at the trainer and it's George Navarro. We're talking about the five. True to the game is dropping to the $12,500 level after breaking slowly. Failed to get on track. It was a $16,000 career debut at five and a half furlongs. So normally you look at that and you say, ah, I'm not going to use this horse, but it's George Navarro. He's got excellent statistics. So I think when you're putting your Rainbow Six ticket together, if not on your A ticket, got to be on your B ticket somewhere. Don't need to convince me. I have the horse on the ticket as well. We see things identically here in the fourth race. Completely agree with you. George Navarro winning maiden claiming races at a 38% clip. Also 29% when stretching horses out from a sprint to a route. Yeah, and just to add to that, 25% with the 31 to 60 day layoff. So uh, uh, full of stats there. So horse, when you're putting that ticket together, you have to use. We'll go to the fifth race today. And this one is uh, five furlong turf events. Claimers, Phillies, three-year-olds, 30 $35,000, and we got nine runners in this field, and this could kick off the pick five in the afternoon, and I went with a horse in here that you have in second, I have on top, eight, goodbye sorrow, and I believe this horse offers some value in here, I don't know what he is on the morning line, 10 to 1, uh, he's this is a, a daughter of Bring the Heat, returns from the layoff, tries to turf for trainer Wesley Ward, who excels with the dirt to turf mood, 28%, with turf sprinters in general, 29%, this layoff he's good with, it's 20%, but bring the heat. He's had th that progeny have won like three or four sprint races for him. He trained bring the heat, and I just think this horse is a little bit of a sneaky in here, and I would love to get 10 to 1. Maybe a little bit <laughs> sneaky, but I don't know how sneaky because I definitely saw that same thing there. You see Wesley Ward in a turf sprint, and you have to be completely keyed in on that. You cannot leave it off the ticket. Completely agree with what you're saying. Didn't show much in our last start, but pretty much starting fresh today off a layoff and on a new surface, that is where Ward excels. Uh, yeah. Mind, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mind you, I put the four, Awesome and Densome, on top just because didn't have quite so many question marks. This one's a little bit more proven. Dropped down to the claiming ranks in her last start and moved forward in a big way. She gamely dueled to the wire and just missed out on the win by three quarters of a length. And she was three and a half lengths clear of the show horse. That was her first start in almost three months. So second start off the layoff. Should be able to take another step forward for trainer Louis Ramirez, who also wins turf sprints at a 20% clip. So very good in this area. Yeah, when I was going when I interrupted you, what I was gonna say is you probably have the right horse on top. Or you know, awesome and then some for all the reasons you mentioned because you know this horse is proven. The other one I, you know like number eight, goodbye sorrow, it is Wesley Ward. I was looking for some value in there. But on paper and the way you explained it, number four, awesome and then some certainly looks like the one to beat in there. And we both used the two summers back who's dropping to the thirty five thousand dollar level, turning back today to five furlongs, followed her thirty five thousand dollar maiden victory at a mile with a chase and fade performance last time out against $50,000 optional claimers going a mile in the 16th. Here's the concern I had. The barn, I couldn't believe it when I looked at this stat. Stat, zero for 22 with turf sprinters. Yeah, you wouldn't think that. You know, it's a good barn. You would not think they just don't, you know, have a lot of turf sprinters in their barn. I guess what it is. Right. That has to be it. And this one, what a tall order she was faced with coming out of that maiden win. She understandably faded and also was stretching out to a mile and a 16th. Cuts back in distance. That's going to help her, too. Yeah. And, I, you know, I just was like, I looked down and I said, wow, zero for 22. You would never, ever think that. Let's go to race number six. And this one is one mile and one sixteenth on the turf. It's a state bred maiden, three-year-olds, maiden special weight condition. Uh, one uh, equipment note in here, number four, uh, shake things up. We'll race with the blinkers on this afternoon. And uh, we both started it off with the number seven in here. we got a rewind. We want to go back and show you a replay uh, of uh, shake things up, right? Isn't it that right? Yes, this is shake things up in a $75,000 maiden claim you're going to see here. And this horse had a terrible trip 
in his debut. You're going to see him there take up and steady, stumbles a little bit. Well, he's not done yet. He's going to do the same thing here. The seven has to steady again, has nowhere to go, has to angle out and restart the run. And this is in the horse's first career start. So you can imagine things did not go. But look at him trying to come back and win again yeah. as he's being taken out <laughs> by a horse to his inside. I think, you know, taking a slight step up, but I don't think the class is really going to make a difference. I think that horse surely had a great learning experience can move forward off of that. Clement, 24% with Maidens making their second start. This horse has been working really well at Pace and Park, and I think with a good trip, do not leave off the ticket. Yeah, and what they did leave off the program was that this horse is going to wear blinkers today, so that will be, you'll see a stat up on that. So just rock that down, that the number four, shake things up. We'll race with blinkers, probably just a little typographical error, but the horse was supposed to run in blinkers. But we both went with, the, after all of that, we went with the number seven, Moonlit Friday, who's hoping to shine uh, <laughs> after it went stretching out to a mile in the 16th after the promising seven and a half furlong debut in which he finished six but he finished six behind a pair of next out winners in that race and one of the horses we both like is uh, Forrest of the past who won the Cutler Bay Stakes in his next start it's Billy Mott has two of the horses in his race he also has the number six go around yeah, lots to like about this horse, especially that he's making his second start for Belmont. Yeah. Belmont never, he's known not to have his horses cranked for their debuts. He ran behind a very nice horse and forced the pass, and I think he should be much better today. Belmont's horses almost always move forward in their second starts. And this one turned in a bullet, three furlong blowout to turn, tune up for this start here on Monday, so he should be sharp. For this race, I like them a lot. Yeah, we both used the number three in here, Semblance Order, stretching out to a mile and 16. Blinkers added today, rallying to finish in a dead heat for second, beating only one and a half against a against similar. Going a mile, I thought this horse ran pretty well. Jenna Antonucci, Edgar Zayas, uh, handling that uh, stretch out in distance, I think the blinkers will help. Yeah, and that was his first turf start, and I think he really took to it, and he's bred for the turf as a son of Arch. I think he fits in here very well. Let's go to a race number seven, five furlongs. These are uh, turf maidens, three-year-olds and up under maiden special weight conditions. And we do have two scratches in here. Scratch number five, where's my sock? And number six, Apple Orchard, who is one of my selections in here. But we had this horse uh, picked the other day, Malibu Charlie. Did not compete back, so we're going to show you Malibu Charlie's race from March 17th. Yeah, this is... You're going to see him. He does not break very well here. Breaks a little bit slowly, and then he's going to rush up towards the front runners. And, you know, that's hard. When you yeah. break slow and you try to rush up, then you've got to take back and ask them to go again. And here he is asking to go again, but he has nowhere to go. No yeah. room. The rider's taken up here again. This horse is being asked to stop and go, stop and go. But he's going to keep coming. Angles out at the top of the stretch, and he's going to continue to make up ground. He just keeps coming. He's going to finish second by just a neck, but I really love the run that he put in. He really didn't give up despite all the stop and go, which can be very, very tough. There's no reason to think he won't move forward in his second start off of an eight-month layoff. That was his first start in more than eight months. That really impressed me. And Brian Lynch is 21% in that category for that time frame of a layoff. And he's going to get blinkers on today. And the story about that horse, he was in the other day for a claiming tag, and it would have been one to nine in that particular race. And then you find a spot like this where this horse is stepping up into maiden special weight competition. But after that, he replay just the, still the one to beat in there. Uh, I went with a first time starter in second, and that's a little bit of a guess in here. And the horse is a little Chris A, son of line of David, debuting for trainer Carlo of Bacareza, who has a 23% a average. It's a limited sampling with first time starters. You know, the horse has so-so turf breeding, but only going five-eighths of a mile. And Carlo does such a good job with his first-time starters. I knew you threw it on the ticket, so I, I just thought that uh, little Chris A, you know, I, I love Malibu Charlie in here, but I think if you're looking for a sneaky, maybe it's that first-time starter, little Chris A. Yeah, and the breezes have been very, very consistent since early February. Definitely should be ready to go today. My concern was a little bit, like you mentioned, the pedigree. Lina David really hasn't had a lot of success with his debut runner. 
Myers. This one may need one, but that's coupled with Carlo Vacarezza doing very well with first-time yeah. starters. So that could give him an edge. I went with another first-time starter in second. That could also be a little bit sneaky, and that is the two-sharp Valor. He's got turf in the pedigree. Right. The dam was a stakes winner on dirt, but also won on the grass and was stakes placed on the grass. His works have gotten really good reviews, and I thought he could be a really nice value at 12-1. to 1. Yeah, 12-1 to 1 and in. You're getting Agar Zayas out of the Ronnie Spatz barn. So uh, certainly a horse that, uh, in this type of race where, you know, you have one horse stands out, but that horse, you know, he, you know coming second off a long layoff, you know, maybe a little vulnerable, vulnerable in there. So you go with, the, uh, you know, one of, maybe the, one of the, of the two first-time starters we pointed out. Uh, certainly uh, can't go wrong adding them to your ticket if you can. Now we're going to go to race number eight, which is a one-mile turf starter optional claim. And Phillies and Mares, four-year-olds and up, $12,500. Scratch to five, and I guess a significant scratch here, number six, Wild Suava. But not to me, because I went with the number eight, done one on top of my ticket, and was my best bet today. Is my best bet, not was, is my best bet today. Turning back to a mile after showing good tactical speed before weakening late in a pair at the $25,000 to $20,000 optional claimer level going a mile in the 16th. This is the lowest level of competition she's faced in all her life. I like this as I've been following her for a couple of years now, and I just thought Dunn One is in the spot to get back to her winning ways today, so I put her right on top of the ticket. I know you're, you've always <laughs> enjoyed watching that one, and how could you not? Stakes place Philly, a four-time winner here at Gulfstream, and just very consistent. Hasn't been in her best form of late, but like you mentioned, she's been running against much tougher. My concern is that she's winless in five tries at a mile, and that's why I went with May Dell on top, cutting back to a mile after getting caught in the final strides going a mile and a 16th in her last start on March 1st. Peter Walder, trainer Peter Walder, 28% with horses running off a 31 to 60 day break. She also boasts a great record at this distance. Two wins in a second from three starts at a mile, and I think she might be the lone speed in here and can control things, take them all the way around. Well, you know, with the scratch of the morning line favorite in here, number six, Wild Suava, who I had right on my ticket, not on top. I had on top. Uh, you had on top. You know, it makes it look a little uh, better for number seven, Vipira. This mm -hmm. one is going to try $12,000 starter optional claimers. She had a two-race win streak going with against $20,000 claimers. Then, go, you know, comes back and runs pretty well against $20,000 optional claimers. Drop down. That was going a mile in the 16th. And I think the turn back to a mile can be the key to our success today, especially with the number six horse out of the race. Could be. Again, like you mentioned, the winning streak running well definitely had to put her on the ticket. Let's go to race number nine. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Maiden claim is Phillies and Mass three and up. We have one scratch. It's the number 13 horse. So we're going to have 12 runners in the final race for our super high five. And we want to go back and show your race from March 19. And it's a horse that we both have on top of our ticket. And that is Love Flute. Love Flute definitely had to put this one on top, <laughs> especially what you saw from her last time. She has nowhere to go at the quarter pole in this race, but she's going to keep running a little bit like Malibu Charlie that we looked at earlier. Again, nowhere to go, but going to angle out right here and run on to be third, beating just a length and a half. You also saw Kabuki Rose there make a late run to finish fourth. She had to angle out and gets bumped around a little bit. I had to put her on the ticket because that was her turf debut, and I thought she ran very well despite the trip in that turf debut, and I think she might be able to get a piece of it as well. Well, you see our selections up there. So we were thinking of like the other horse we have in second is Violet Road. Turn it back to seven and a half furlongs after returning from the layoff to get beat. Just a half length uh, when surrendering that late lead uh, versus similar going a mile in the 16th. Just looks like this horse belongs in this race there. And I, I like the nine in there, Love Flute, but I like the fact that you showed number six uh, today, uh, Kabuki Rosie, because I like that horse today. And I think she's a little bit of a price. She's 10 to one on the line. I think you got to yeah. use her on the super high five ticket. Absolutely, I would use her. And the nine love flute, I also think, is going to do well with the stretch out. No. I think definitely the extra couple of panels are going to benefit her. Yeah, so uh, that's our nine race card for Friday, so it's going to be a lot of fun. As we mentioned, in race number four today, the Rainbow Six starts with over $680,000 in the pool. It, it'll be near $800,000 by the time it goes, and we'll see if they hit it. Uh, if not, it'll carry on, or uh, uh, we're having so much fun with this bet. It just makes every day exciting. You go, I wonder if the, how many tickets are going to left? How many tickets after every race? So 
so we'll see how that goes. Uh, anything else, Katie, before we head out uh, for our afternoon of racing here at Gulfstream Park? We're beginning to sound a little bit like broken records, but the sun is shining here, <laughs> and it seems like another nice day here at Gulfstream, so come out and enjoy the races and play that Rainbow Six. I know when we get to the final leg, I'm going to be just waiting pen and paper <laughs> on my program is there a single? And it just <laughs> makes it really fun to follow. And best of luck to you today. Thanks for joining us.